for those of you who have joined us for Indications Conference, uh, we've talked a lot about ankle fusions and techniques, but this is a case that I saw the other day that I wanted to get your opinion on. This is a 58-year-old female. She comes in with this initial injury. It's in significant to know that she has a history of type 2 diabetes with neuropathy, um, fairly dense neuropathy, and some other um, complications from diabetes. And so she comes in with this initial injury, and then about 11 days later, shows back up with increasing pain and swelling. And you can see that not only has the fracture displaced, but now there's a distal tibia fracture as well as a consequence of a Charcot event of the distal tibia. So if you look at her CT scan, you can see that distal tibia fracture has shifted. It's a very small shell of bone. It's not really in a place that's very fixable, um, at least not for me. And in this case, we elected to proceed with a TTC arthrodesis with a hind foot fusion nail. Uncomplicated, we use the um, uh, orthobiologic kitchen sink including um, bone graft um, and uh, you know felt pretty good about things and this is where we were at in August of this year so just a couple months ago intermittent soreness and swelling but overall doing pretty well and feeling pretty good about my x-rays with one exception that if you look at that screw across that subtalar joint you can see that there's some a halo effect and maybe if you look at that zoom in on the tip of the nail you can see a little bit of halo effect around that TC fusion nail. So she shows up with increasing pain about uh, about a couple weeks ago, and now she's had changes to the X-ray, which you can see the broken rod um, at the uh, at the screw that traverses the subtalar joint. And if you look at the lateral, you can see that there's been a displacement of the rod, and then, and the CT scan confirms that there's a non-union at the subtalar joint. There's haloing around those spots that we saw before, and now we have a broken rod. Now, you can manage this patient. You can manage this patient non-operatively in a AFO, and that would be very reasonable. She's having enough pain, swelling, and limitation that she'd like to proceed with surgery. So my question for y'all is, how am I going to get that rod out of there? If this is your case, and you get called about it, what are you going to have on hand to get this rod out? Um, what are you going to do if you can't get the rod out? Um, some different things to think about as the case comes up. What are you going to use for, few, to, to, for bone graft for the subtalar joint? So I'm certainly open to suggestions on this case. would love to get your feedback. Um, uh, jump on here, send me a message, send me an email, and uh, love to get some discussion. Hopefully I'll have a follow-up for this case and we can talk about um, uh, some different techniques that can be used and um, if you ever run into this situation.